the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Annie Laurie Gaylor is with us. Catholic League President Bill Donahue, Fox News contributor Father Jonathan Morris, and from Fox News Radio, it's Todd Starnes. Uh, Annie, uh, you see what the ramifications to all of this. Can you name a society before that has established a new definition of marriage? And do you not see this coming conflict between religious institutions and those that are going to claim, oh, these religious institutions must now change their value system or else they're not going to be allowed to operate, as Clarence Thomas warned in his dissent? What the Supreme Court has done is say that individuals have a right to marry regardless of their sexual orientation. But do churches have and the right? Do, do, religion do church, cannot churches, dictate You're not answering my question. I know what the court decision said. I read it. But should churches now be forced to marry, or do you believe in the First Amendment, the free exercise thereof? Churches have never been compelled to marry anybody, and nobody's going to force churches to have Justice gay weddings Thomas, if they don't want Justice Thomas, in his dissent, to. warns of this coming battle. I'm asking where you stand. Would you support the idea that churches must, so must go about supporting gay marriage? And churches do not have to support gay marriage, but the government must <laughs> allow it. And the okay, state but if of somebody wants to marry in a but here. if somebody wants to marry in a church and the church says no, that goes against our value system. You accept the church's right to their First Amendment values. Is that true? Yes. Even if they're taxes. All right. What are you saying, Father? Well, Eve, well how about Annie? Uh, is it Lori? A Annie Lori Gaylor. Annie Lori. Uh, okay. What if, what if the church is tax exempt? Uh, would you also suggest that they should keep their tax-exempt status and still be able to say, you know what, actually we're not going to do that because it goes against our values? I, I think that if the church is getting money from the government, which many okay, of them so are, in other words, they you should don't, not be permitted yes, to discriminate okay. in employment. Yep. That's, that's where it's going, Sean. That's where it's going. Well, churches that, should not that's be giving exactly, government money. Well, that's exactly where it's going. Well, that was my point, uh, Todd. Yeah, Sean, look, I mean, what's happening to this dear lady who I interviewed in my FoxNews.com column is happening all across the country. We're understanding, you know, we've been talking about the churches, but what about the Christians when they leave the walls of the church and they want to practice their faith in the public marketplace? And it seems as though the humanists have declared some sort of a secular fatwa, and they want to get rid of all the religious icons. They want to purge Christians. Christian thought and Christian speech and Christian beliefs from the public marketplace. And that is just simply, just not only is it wrong, it's unconstitutional. Let me bring in Bill Donahue here. I saw you put out earlier today, Bill, in your newsletter that there's a case, a Milwaukee Art Museum is hosting an offensive exhibit, what, 17,000 colored condoms are used to portray Pope Benedict? Right. And they take public money. You see, this is the way the game is being played. I don't believe this, uh, Annie, uh, uh, one bit, by the way. I've been following her organization for years. They do want to take away the tax-exempt status. I like people when they're honest. Don't play games with me, miss. Now, this what's going on <laughs> here. They, they are taking public monies, the Milwaukee Art Museum, and they're saying it's okay to bash Catholics. Catholics help fund that. I can't put a nativity set on public grounds. I can't have a Ten Commandments, which is the edifice of the, of the of Western civilization. Bill, so they're playing a game here. They're lying when it comes to, to separation of church and state. But you also had yeah, we elephant We do not have dung. blasphemy on laws the, in the United States. Annie, hang on. We also had the Brooklyn Museum of Art. Right. Elephant dung on, on a picture of the Virgin Mary, again, publicly funded. Exactly. And, and, and I led the demonstration in the street against that. Yeah. And I'm not saying that I want censorship. What I want is an honest debate. These people want to impose their militant secular values down our throats. And we're in for a fight. And unless religious so leaders Thomas fight Clarence Thomas is right. You agree. Of course Clarence oh, Thomas was he right. He was absolutely right. And I think here's the ugly fact people don't want to talk about. They actually believe that that sweet grandmother you just had on there, Linda Barnett, right. is a bigot because she holds to biblical values. That's what they believe. They believe people like Billy Graham and Franklin Graham are bigots. That's what we're dealing with here, Sean. Uh, this is a very, very dangerous Linda and dark Barnett time. Did the right thing. Excuse me, ma'am. Hold on, ma'am. We're, we're having a conversation here. Hold on just a second. Mm -hmm. And again, Sean, you've got these organizations like the Freedom from Religion Foundation that come in and bully these small towns, these small communities. It is just not right. Father? You know, I, I would love to hear what Annie thinks about this. In Oklahoma, uh, that statue of the Ten Commandments, it was run down by Satanists. 
Okay. Right. Now, I would never want a statue, for example, of uh, who knows, of Pope Benedict, right, up in front of a of a state building, right. But the Ten Commandments have to do with history, and it has to do with the history it's, of the foundation of our Western civilization Father, law. David, the evolution of our Judeo-Christian value system is rooted in the Ten yes. Commandments. But, it's just a fact. But the problem, what, what Annie, of Oklahoma Annie, Annie, let's be honest. No Annie, let's be honest here. What the problem no you have with this history, Annie, hold on, let me just, have Annie, I'll let you talk in a second. Or heart. Let me or just, to have any let me, let me just let you talk, it, but just answer my question. The problem here with this part of history that you don't want to be seen is that it has a religious element to it. Is that true? There is no... Ten Commandments in our secular and godless constitution, the Ten Commandments are not the underpinning of our I, I, civil I, I, government. They are religious in nature, and it is a, totally appropriate that they... Hey, Annie? Uh, Oklahoma Supreme Court founding, has ruled that they do not belong at the seat of our Annie, state government in Oklahoma. Our, our founding document, our declaration, says we're endowed by our Creator. Does it not? Yes, and that is not the foundation of our law. That is the Declaration that of is, Our Independence, that, that our and that was written document. by a deist, that is it. Thomas that's our declaration. Jefferson, that's our founding who was anti-biblical. And, and when you look at the history of the First Amendment, you will see that what well, government didn't say, you know, separation from religion when they talked about separation. John, can I say one more thing? Last Annie, word, Annie doesn't represent, the good news is that Annie doesn't rep represent most atheists in our country no. who are so much more rational and compassionate and tolerant. Right. And I, she's Thank you, probably but a great, actually, great woman, but that's not tolerance and compassion. All right, I got to end it there. Thank you all for being with us. Separation of church and